The other day, I was watching a video by Joy Defee, and I immediately wanted to try what she was doing. And that is what happens when I watch her videos. I'm, I'm either so inspired that I can't wait to try it, or I learn something new, or something like that. So, you know, clearly, if you don't subscribe to her channel and watch her videos, you probably are going to want to do that. Um, I'm going to give you the link to her video so that you can watch how she did it correctly. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm like, okay, I watched it, and I'm kind of like, yeah, I think I get the gist of it. You know, I'll just go for it. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to kind of fumble our way through this. But she, she gives really good instructions on everything she does. So um, go check her out, and then come back here and laugh at my attempts <laughs> to do what she's doing. <laughs> Okay, this is a technique. What you're going to need are some papers. And I have gathered some, like, you know, real vintage papers, some book pages, some notes, some invoices. I grabbed a piece of coffee dyed paper. And then she used um, printables, vintage themed printables. So I printed some out that I had on my computer. And I think most of these are from the Graphics Fairy. These are the, you know, just the free ones that she so generously puts out there for us. But, um, yeah, just use, use, a, use whatever. And the first thing that we're going to do is kind of rough up our paper. Let's just grab one. Let's grab one of these. And this is a technique that she used to kind of make a cool looking distressed vintage paper. And I just thought it was super awesome. So, um, if I remember right, she squished her paper. So, I'm going to squish mine. Okay. And then she kind of distressed it a little bit. I think she had a really rough nail file. I found a sanding block that I think will work. Okay, yeah, it did do something. I was thinking that did nothing. No, it did. I see it now. It kind of actually, because this is printed, it just sanded off some of the print in places, which looks kind of cool. Okay, I'm working on a piece of cardboard, because Joyce said to, so I am. <laughs> And now what I'm going to need is wax. She was using wax out of her. She has one of those wax melt pot things, you know, that has the scented wax in it. And when it gets down to the bottom, she just takes that little last piece out of there and uses it. I don't have that, but I was, you know, scrunching around for whatever kind of wax I have. I have some designated craft wax. I keep it in this, this is one of those, like a little electric kettle thing I've had for eons. And when we were doing like faux encaustic painting and stuff, this is what I'd use. Because see, I have my designated wax brush. This looks like it's probably beeswax. This looks like it's probably paraffin. Um, dirty paraffin. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what was going on with that candle. I got another candle. It looks like I was having some kind of weird ritual. I promise I wasn't, but <laughs> I don't remember. Anyway, we need some wax. This is what I've got. So this is what I'm going to use. And I'm just going to use one of these blobs of paraffin. I don't know how or why it's in these blobs. It literally looks like I grabbed the wax and did like this, which clearly I did. I can even see my own fingerprints in there. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> okay, yeah. Anyway, I had a really good reason for it at the time. I am just sure of it. So, she took some scissors and took her wax, and then she just started 
snipping off you know and hers was in a nice little disc and she got you know could really snip around the edges and I've got this weird blob so we're just gonna oh there we go yeah we can snip you just want some crumbles of wax all over your page I have no idea if I've got too much or not enough there's so much beige here and my vision has gotten so bad I can't really see a thing <laughs> that's okay okay we're just gonna we're gonna assume that that's fine now she had you know she did a couple different ways she did one where she took another piece of paper and laid on top and um, which you know if you're the least bit concerned for your iron you could if you're the least bit concerned for your iron don't don't do this because <laughs> I'm, I'm have a feeling it that could destroy an iron especially if it's like a steam iron that has holes in it that's not ideal she used a travel iron which is what I have this is my designated craft travel iron y'all this has seen some action over the years and it's got a flat plate see there's no holes in it so I don't worry about wax gunking it up or anything so it is hot and ready to go so I'm just gonna I'm gonna lay it on here like she did oh see look it just starts to melt and she was showing how you know like she actually makes her cool papers and techniques and stuff and then she actually makes stuff out of them you know she uses her stuff which I think is fabulous that sometimes happens here and sometimes it doesn't so you know she had all kinds of tips for if you're going to make it into a journal cover and you're going to sew it you know you want to pay attention to how you're doing it and this that and the other oh I can really see how you know where we scrunched it up well, that really shows up now and added a lot to the um, kind of distressed look so that's really cool and then you know the uh, the wax makes the paper just slightly transparent so this is such a cool effect oh look that would be a sweet little journal cover okay and then she went a step further she had some, she had some, oh yeah, she did stamps. She had a little clear stamp that had kind of a crosshatch pattern. I don't have that, but I've got these big honking red rubber stamps from Eon's Past that are just kind of textural, no real image, just textural. And then she had some pretty shiny gold like watercolor paint. I don't have that either. <laughs> But what do I have? Um, oh, I thought I pulled something out. Did I not? I guess I didn't. Okay. Let me let me grab. Oh yeah, I've got these. These are um, Twinkling H two O's, Twinkle Toes. Remember, I've used these off and on over the years. They're just a sparkly watercolor. And I sprayed a little water on them, and I don't know if these are gonna really work, but let's let's find out. Um, I need a brush, a somewhat I don't know, kind of. I really don't have a good watercolor brush. This is sort of fluffy. I guess I'll need it wet, and then. Let's use, I don't, I'm not sure what we've got here. I thought I pre-wet these. Clearly, I did not. Either that or they've dried up past being reconstituted. Does that happen? I'm really not sure. I'm just see I don't think this is gonna work because she she had some that were too watery and it didn't really work good we'll just see let's just find out oops yeah cuz you know wax is kind of a resist and uh, so anything really I think 
watery is probably going to put up a fight when you do that. But yeah, it's kind of blobby, but it it's putting gold down, which is the uh, which is the goal. I'll move in a little so you can see better. Let's go over here. See if I can get some more out of here. can take and you know you can do the splash splash thing uh, what color do I want to splash splash oh, I like that do I have something kind of like that I can't tell they're just all dark and dark and mysterious <laughs> uh, that too orange I don't know let's try this one let's see if this one will splash splash So very pretty. Now I also thought um, for adding gold, let's try this. I don't know if this is going to work. Y'all just, just hang with me. We're making this up as we go. Let's do another one. Maybe this one, whatever this is. Oh, this was a um, sheet music cover. Okay. Switch it up. Yeah. And a little. Scissors down. That's there it is. Now snip some wax kind of all over here. I keep setting my elbow in these paints. I've got like a really wet and probably colorful elbow. So I'm gonna move those out of the way. Okay, let's move out a little. Here's what I was thinking. I'm wondering, and I don't know if this is going to work, it may not. I'm wondering if there's enough wax in here to grab hold of some of these. I have this little box of scraps of gold leaf, you know, like if you gold leaf something and you brush off the excess. I just kind of put it in here like that. And I'm wondering if it'll hold any of it. Here's, let's see, here's what I think I'll do. Let's go ahead and melt this. I might have to do like two coats. Or like, okay, let's kind of melt that. And then drop on some flakes. Not that big.
Okay, like that. And now do we need to add more wax? Probably. I don't know if this will work or if they're just going to flake right off. But doesn't hurt to try, right? Oops. Maybe if I cut them a little more significant. Okay, now let's see what happens. Feeling like they're just coming right off. Maybe that's not enough wax to hold them. Okay, let's see, did I lose them all? Oh, some of them held. Oh. Uh, Sort of. I don't know how you could make that any any better. The ones that held are super cool. But I'm feeling like maybe it was more trouble than it was worth. What else can we do? Let's do some more. Um, I don't want to lose all of this. You now I've got waxy gold leaf. You do want cardboard down on your work surface or something, you know, heat resistant. Did I say that in the beginning? Yeah, I probably should have, probably should have led with that. Uh, where'd my paints go? There they are. Okay, now I want to do some, maybe some of this blue. Very nice, very nice. And what else? How about some of this? I want to find a better paint to put on here. I'm not feeling like the paint I'm using is the right thing. It's just not very pigmented, you know? something more pigmented. Here's some metallic watercolor in a tube. Ruby, copper, marcasite, I don't know what that means. Peridot, oh gold. Okay, maybe one of those will work forgot I had those. Now, are they still viable <laughs> watercolors? We don't know. We got a 50-50 shot here, people. Where'd the gold one go? That's the one I want. <gasps> it's still liquid. Okay, I'm just going to use just a little bit of water. And just pull it out of the tube. I need a, I need a palette. Why is there no palette right in front of me? Oh, there it is. Okay. Yes. And just a barely wet brush so that it doesn't get too watery.
Well, let's see. <gasps> yes! Ding, ding! We have a winner! Wrong brush. I'll get up close and let you see here in just a second. I want to get the rest of this on here. While I still can. I want to overdo it <laughs> while I still can. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Now, I am not sure if you're going to be able to see, see those gold squares. They're just perfectly, perfectly subtle. So that's that's the key when you're painting your watercolor on your rubber stamp. Don't use a whole lot of water. Yeah, oh, I think that's really cool looking. I like that. I like that just like it is. Okay, it needs to needs to dry. I want to do another one. I kind of want to do this. Um, page from a notepad. No, let's do the invoice. Do this invoice. Mm, I'm a little leery about... I'm going to gently <laughs> do this because it's not really too brittle yet, but um, some vintage papers get really brittle when they get old and they will just crumble. I think we're all right. Okay. A little of this. I don't know if this is going to do anything since this is not printed. You know, I'm not going to sand off any of the printing. Get a close-up look. It, it slightly did. Not a whole lot, but I see some some slightly distressed areas. Okay. So let me go in with some of whatever's left on here. Maybe a little, a little copper, and make some, some splashies. And then, let's do the wax. Boy, this one had a lot of wax in there. I'm just about covered. Oh, that's actually really cool. And it's pretty darn transparent because that paper was so thin to begin with. Ooh, I like that. And I'm wanting some of uh, some more of this on there in the gold. Maybe, what do you get when you mix copper with gold? It's something horrible, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, okay, we're gonna find out. Where's my brush? That's not it. There it is. Oh, it's not too bad. Not too bad. Oh, 
awesome. Yeah, okay, these are fun. Clearly I'm enjoying this. I'm going to do a few more, and then I will show you what I end up with when all of these have dried and done their thing. Okay, I figure I better show you this right quick because I'm really liking it. Um, I've got my piece of paper all prepped. I've crunched it up. I sanded it. I've got little bits of wax all over it. And I was struggling with adding color. I wasn't really happy with anything that I was trying. So I thought, okay, I'm melting wax. So I might as well grab some more colored wax. <laughs> These are my crayons. <laughs> so I pulled out my crayons and started adding those to my wax for added color if I wanted. So I've got like, um, this is a little, this one is sepia and some of my crayons are Crayola. Some of them are just cheap, you know, like a store brand, whatever. Some of them, I'm not quite sure what they are. So we can add some of that. I'm liking this one. This one was called Rosewood, I think. And then of course, you gotta have a little gold. And unfortunately, I don't have very many metallic crayons, but I'm kind of thinking I might be inspired to go pick some up now. Okay, oh, that's big. And let's do a little bit. This, this is actually a crayon. And I think it was, there were different pieces, and I think it was a bunny rabbit. It was probably an Easter thing or something I got on clearance. I don't know, but it's crayon. <laughs> so I'm going to add some of it. Just a little bit here and there. And I did find when you're using the crayons, I, I like the look better when I've got the, the uh, either the paraffin or the candle or whatever you're using, get some of this with it. Otherwise your crayon can just kind of sit there and not move and it just looks like a, a little, you know, monkey pox or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> okay. So. And it's almost like you painted or you added paint, but without the paint. And then I think it just looks really cool. Neato, right? Now I could go in, when you use crayons, you do want to kind of wipe off your uh, your iron every now and then because the residue gets on here and just continues to cook and it turns black and it'll start turning your pages black. It's, it's happened a little bit on this one. It really picks up the creases where you crumpled it, but yeah, it's not too bad. And then I found, okay, for adding like the little stamped, um, pieces. I was just having trouble with the paint for that. I wasn't, it just wasn't making me happy. So I pulled out some old uh, Lumiere paints. This is metallic gold and I put some right here and you can see mine is really thick because it is vintage. <laughs> so I'm going to add a little water. Just so it's nice and spreadable. Then I can add this to my stamp. And like with any paint, like an acrylic paint that you're putting on your rubber stamps, you are probably going to want to clean your stamp really good afterwards. 
then that really shows up and then I'm not sure you can tell because of glare and everything going on but it is quite reflective and lovely so do it in a few more spots and that makes me quite happy I'm going to put some pictures up at the end when I get through playing. I think I already said that, uh, but I am I am legit going to do it eventually. I also found I like this um, script stamp. I just put the Lumiere on it, and I haven't done anything on that one yet, but I will and then stamp it out and it adds a little coolness too. So yeah, I'm going to sit here. I've only got a couple more pages to finish up and then I'll show you what I ended up with. I have to say, I am just really happy with my results. Let's flip through here and I'll show you. Um, I really love the way the real ephemera turned out I think because you know the paper was just so varied in weight and quality um, they're my favorites and I've got several this was just a really thin it was like a English to Japanese dictionary so it had really thin dictionary type pages and they just came out beautifully. I like the little added metallics and a little, little pop of color here and there. This one has a lot of color on it. I think I just kind of cleaned off my brush on that one. Some of the gold leaf managed to stick here and there on a few of them. That was kind of hit or miss. That was another brush cleaning page. <laughs> and these papers, can you tell how transparent they are? This is fabulous. It gives, you know, very similar results to the Daddy Vans that I use, which is also a wax. But um, it's different because Daddy Vans is kind of a paste to begin with. And these were a solid to begin with. So when you get it on there kind of thick, you know, after you melt it, you can feel the wax. Daddy Vans, you really can't feel. It absorbs into the paper. But these, you can kind of feel the wax. It's very cool. It's, it's a little, you know, very similar effect, but different. This was a kind of a heavy paper, and you don't get as much transparency, but you definitely get the cool waxiness. See that? I'm really thinking that I'm going to put these in some kind of a journal. Now this is a printed piece and I use pretty good printer paper. So it's got a little bit of transparency, not a ton, but on the, you know, that, that might be a downside depending on what you want, but on the upside, you know, it's a it's a sturdy paper. You can really mistreat it and it, it holds up really well. <clears throat> this one I used as kind of a cleanup page. You know, if I had too much wax and needed to soak a little up, I would do that. And it, it turned out kind of cool. It's just, there's not a lot of wax on it because I didn't put any wax on it at all. It was for cleanup only, but just the, the distressed part of it turned out cool. And this was the same printout, but I did wax this one. <clears throat> and this has some crayon on it. And then some of the... Oh, I have my lights adjusted to where there's no glare. And then when I need glare to show you something metallic, I can't get it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there is some, uh, I use the Lumiere paints to stamp, and that shows up really well. You'll just have to trust me. I don't know if you can see it. 
and the little dragonflies. I like that. This one was just way overboard, but it looks so stinking cool. <laughs> I still love it. <laughs> yeah, this was when I was figuring out, okay, number one, go easy on the crayons. Number two, clean off your, your steam iron plate every now and then because the the crayons get dark or when or the wax that you leave on here can get dark and uh, it'll come off on your page <clears throat> I love this maybe this will be my cover of whatever I do so yeah thoroughly enjoyed it you can just go ahead and sit down make you a whole bunch at one time make sure that you watch joy's video because she she'll show you you know for real how to do it plus how to um make something out of them she did she made hers in a journal a really cute um vintage journal and i hope you give it a try that's all i have the end